in this video, we're gonna be discussing the introduction of the graphs of the circular functions. So, umpisahan natin sa sign. We have this table. In the first row, we can see the values of our x. It starts with 0, then pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, and pi. These are our region measures that we can see in our unit circle. 0 up to pi is the half revolution. And kung gusto nyo dugsungan itong table na ito up to the 2 pi or the 1 revolution, it's up to you. Now let's obtain the values of our sine function or sine x. So since we have the values of x, let's just substitute here. So sine 0 is equal to 0. Sine pi over 6, that is 1 half or 0.5. So, kinukuha natin yung decimal values ng ating value na fraction dito para mas mabilis siyang maiplat sa ating Cartesian plane. So, let's continue. Sine pi over 4, that is square root of 2 over 2 or 0.71. Sine pi over 3, that is square root of 3 over 2 or 0.87. Sine pi over 2, that is 1. Sine 2 pi over 3, that is square root of 3 over 2, so kagaya lang nung pi thirds natin, that is 0.87, and so on. You can also obtain these values using your scientific calculator. So if you're going to plug sine pi over 6, that is equivalent to 0.5. If your calculator is in region mode. Okay, because we are typing the region measures, your scientific calculator must be in region mode for you to be able to find the same values that we have here. Now, let's plot the points. So, this is how the graph of sine function looks like. Here is our first point in our table. So, 0 ang x, 0 ang y. Then, pi over 6 and 0.5. So, pi over 6 is here. Then, this is 0.5. Then, pi over 4, this is 0.71. Pi over 3, this is 0.87. Pi over 2, and this is 1. And so on. Then, after plotting the points, you just trace it with a smooth curve. And you will have the graph in sine function. Now, let's have our cosine function. Then again, let's have the table first. With the same values of x na kagaya dun sa ating sine function. So, cosine 0 is equal to 1. Cosine pi over 6, that is square root of 3 over 2 or 0.87. Cosine pi over 4, that is square root of 2 over 2 or 0.71. Then, so on. Let's plot the points of our cosine function. So this is how the graph of cosine function looks like. We have 0, 1. So this is 0, 1. Pi over 6 and 0.87. Pi over 4 and 0.71. Pi over 3 and 0.5. Pi over 2 and 0. And so on. So you just trace the points with a smooth curve and you will have your cosine function or the graph of your cosine functions. Now since we have the sine and the cosine functions and their graphs, let us compare the two. Let's have the sine function. So this is the graph of our sine function and this is the graph of our cosine function. Now, let's talk about their properties. The first one is, there are periodic functions with a period of 2 pi. So, kung makikita natin from 0 to 2 pi, ito yung mga values or mga points na bumubuo sa 0 to 2 pi natin. Periodic siya because after the interval of 2 pi, mauulit ang kanyang values. So, from 2 pi to 4 pi, ganun din ang kanyang magiging values. Okay? Same with our cosine. So, here is our 
2 pi. From 0 to 2 pi, here is our curve or the values or the points that we have obtained in the table. Then after 2 pi, from 2 pi to 4 pi, we will have the same values. Next, since their curves are extended both left and right continuously, the domain or the values of x is the set of all real numbers. So there is no restriction in the value of x. So let's talk about the range of our sine and cosine function. The range is at the interval of y is greater than or equal to negative 1 but less than or equal to 1 or in this form. So from negative 1 to 1. So here we can see that the graph does not exceed our the value of 1 and the value of negative 1. Therefore, the maximum value of y is 1 and the minimum value is negative 1. So as you can see in our graph, it does not exceed the value of 1. So yung graph natin ay hindi lalampas doon sa 1. And hindi din siya lalampas sa negative 1. So the value of our y is within this range. So from negative 1 up to the positive 1. Then let's talk about their amplitude. The amplitude is equal to 1. So it is known to be the farthest distance from x axis. So from x axis, it is up to the 1 unit only. Okay? Amplitude is also the maximum value of y. Then the graph of our sine function is symmetric about the origin because it is an odd function. So here's our origin. It is symmetric here because we have pi unit to the right and also pi unit to the left. 2 pi to the right, 2 pi to the left. And the graph of our cosine function is symmetric about the y-axis because it is an even Function. So as you can see, here is our y-axis and it is symmetrical. Okay. Now there you have the properties of our sine and cosine function. Now let's have our tangent function. First, we all know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And please take note that the period of the tangent function is Pi. Unlike our sine and cosine function, their periods is 2 pi. Okay, because the graph repeats itself on the intervals negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So makikita natin mamaya sa ating graph kung paano ba yung behavior ng kanyang points. In the interval, we will see the behavior of the graph on one complete cycle. So since we have the interval that we have mentioned here from negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so let's use it and have the region measures between them. So the values of x starts with negative pi over 2, then negative pi over 3, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 6, 0. Then pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Now let's have tangent negative pi over 2. That is undefined. Because here the value of cosine negative pi over 2 is 0. And it makes the tangent function undefined. Tangent negative pi over 3 that is negative square root of 3. Or in decimal that is negative 1.73. Then tangent negative pi over 4 that is equal to negative 1. Tangent negative pi over 6, that is equivalent to negative square root of 3 over 3. Or in decimal, that is negative 0 0.88. So tangent 0 is 0. And so on. Now let's see how the graph of tangent function looks like. So here, as you can see, we have vertical asymptote sa point ng negative pi over 2 at sa positive pi over 2. Sa so next slide, sa comparison ng graphs ng tangent function and cotangent function, i-discuss natin saan ba nagmula itong mga vertical asymptotes nito. 
So now, let's have again our graph in tangent function. And in cotangent, we have 1 over tangent. Or cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So this is the reciprocal of our cotangent. So, in the same manner, nakagaya ng ginawa natin sa tangent kanina, kapag i-graph natin ang cotangent, this is how the graph of cotangent function looks like. Okay? Now, let's talk about their properties. So, the first one is the two graphs are reciprocal of one another. Ngayon ay pag-usapan naman natin yung kanilang domain. For our tangent function, x is an element of all real numbers but cosine x should not be equal to 0 kasi alam naman natin that tangent is equal to sine over cosine so if cosine is 0 it makes the tangent function undefined so kung makikita natin dito yung mga vertical asymptotes natin they make our function undefined okay so if we have tangent negative pi over 2 that's undefined tangent positive pi over 2 that is also undefined. Now for our cotangent function, x is an element of all real numbers and sine should not be equal to 0. So kung makikita naman natin dito, nasa iba ba yung ating sine or yun yung denominator natin. And if we have 0 denominator, that makes our equation undefined. Okay, so if we have cotangent negative 2 pi that is undefined, Cotangent negative pi, that is also undefined. Cotangent 0, cotangent pi, cotangent 2 pi. Then let's talk about their range. Both functions have a range of all real numbers or it has no restriction. Next, both functions are periodic with a period of pi. Nakagaya ng napag-usapan natin kanina. So after having the period of pi, the values repeat. So, tulad yan. Then, after pi, ganun lang din yung makukuha natin na values. Kaya yung curve natin ay paulit-ulit lang after the period of pi. Then, the last is our functions, both tangent function and cotangent function, have no amplitude. Now, let's have our second function. We all know that secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So this is how the graph of our secant function looks like. Okay? So ito yung mga graph ng ating secant. And here you can see the cosine function. And lastly, let's have our cosecant function. Cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. And this is how the graph of cosecant function looks like. So, ito yung graph ng ating cosecant. And we also have our sine function. Now, let's talk about their properties. Both functions are periodic with a period of pi. Next, they have no amplitude. Okay, let's talk about their domain. For the secant function, as you can see, secant is equal to 1 over cosine. Therefore, cosine should not be equal to 0. And yung nakikita natin na vertical asymptotes dito, ito yung mga points kung saan 0 ang ating cosine x. And our secant function is undefined to these vertical asymptotes. And in our cosecant function, as you can see, 1 over sine x. So sine x should not be equal to 0. Okay. So, itong mga vertical asymptotes natin na nandito, ito yung mga value na 0 ang ating sign. And it makes our cosecant function undefined. And for the range, it is the union of the range from negative 1 going to negative infinity and positive 1 going to positive infinity. So, makikita natin dito from 0 papunta dito, not including the 1, we don't have the part of our graph of our secant function. Okay, kasi nasasakop siya ng ating cosine function. Then here naman, ganun din from 0 up to 1, not including 1, 
and negative 1, nasa sakop siya ng ating sine function. So, hindi siya part ng graph ng ating cosecant. And this is the end of our video. If you find this video informative, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. God bless us all.